How can creatures of this dominion escape, escape standing before that throne? We are his subjects. Amen. If the earth is his footstool, you're his subject. God said, as I live, you better, you better perk up when you hear that statement. As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to me. Amen, guys. But what is it? That's heaven and earth. Heaven is the seat of God's authority and the earth is the subject of that authority. Heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. Jesus Christ said, swear not by heaven, for it is God's throne. Neither by the earth, for it is his footstool. Amen. So you, you know what we just located? We just, we just located what all this is. Right there tucked away in a dime store King James Bible. Amen. What is heaven? God's throne. What is the earth? His footstool. But look at Genesis 1-2. What's this firmament between the throne of God and his footstool? What's going on there? What, Genesis 1, 2, and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What's going on with God's footstool in Genesis 1, 2? That realm under God's throne. What's wrong with it? And this is going to get into why man was created and given dominion over it. Amen. This is how your Bible begins, guys. doesn't begin with Hail Marys and religion. This is how it begins right here. God creating his throne and his footstool and the earth in Genesis 1-2 is in some kind of condition. Amen? After he says, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool, what house will you build for me? Where is the place of my Rest. This is, going to, this, is going, this is an important subject in the Bible. One of the Davidic promises is that David's son is going to build God a house. And in that Davidic promise, God said, this is my rest forever. Psalm 132. It's going to be important. That's his throne. That's his footstool. And the subject comes up of his house and his rest. See, when you start talking about a pre-edemic destruction of the earth or what they call the gap theory, people assume you're trying to, you're trying to apologize to scientists and, and, and preach evolution. And it has nothing to do with that with me, guys. Nothing, zero. Look at Job 38. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. You know what the context was? God and the foundations of the earth and the cornerstone of the earth. When did he create the earth, guys? Genesis 1.1. Well, how could, the, how could the angels and the sons of God been created in the six days of Genesis chapter 1 when they're singing together and shouting for joy as he lays the cornerstone of the earth? You cannot find the creation of the angelic beings in the six days of creation. Why? They're already there. What realm are they a part of? God created two realms, the heaven and the earth. Those angels are his ministering spirits. I saw a ladder set up on earth and its top reached unto heaven and the angels of God descending and ascending upon it. What are the angels? Who was God hiding the mystery from? Principalities and powers where? In the heavenly places. Now when God creates the earth, the morning stars and the sounds of sons of God, there's harmony there. They all sang together. They all shouted for joy. Now we know at some point, guys, Satan led some type of rebellion in the angelic realm. But they're all there. When God's creating the earth, he's already created the heaven. These angelic beings that he's created up here are there as he lays the foundation of this earth. 
Amen. Look at verse 8 of Job 38. Or who shut up the what? The sea. What a strange passage. Look at Psalm 104. So after God laid the foundation of the earth, these, these morning stars and sons of God all sang together and shouted for joy. And then the sea broke forth as if it had issued out of a womb. So now get this now. We just read in Job 38 about the, where was you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Now Psalm says that after he laid the foundations of the earth, he covered it with the deep as with a garment. Y'all see that? Why? Come to Revelation 21. I ain't going to tell you why yet. I just want you to acknowledge the facts. What is the scoffers of the last days ignorant of? Everything I'm telling you right now. That all things have not continued as they were from the beginning of the creation. There was some type of judgment brought about by water. And there's another judgment coming of fire. And then Peter says, but according to his promise, we look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Look at Revelation 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first earth was, for the first heaven and the first earth was passed away and there was no more what? <laughs> there's that sea again. Now you've got to understand the seas, and, and listen guys, this stuff's important. The waters under the firmament that were gathered into one place he called seas. When you see that sea, singular, it's referring to this, these waters that are up here above. When Job says the face of the deep is frozen, there's the face right there, not down here. The face speaks of the surface of this up here. And John said it's frozen. That's why Ezekiel sees a crystalline firmament beneath the throne of God. That's why when John goes into the third heaven, he says before the throne of God was a sea of glass. Amen. Now there's no more sea in Revelation 21. There's no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of where? There it is again. Something's relocating. Amen? There's a relocation taking place. Now what's he say? Verse number three. And I heard a great voice out of, out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So the tabernacle of God comes down and dwells with men. You know what that tells me? This sea right now is acting as a separator between the heaven and the earth. Between God and man. Between God and the earth. God is separated from his footstool. Amen. God is the one that separated himself. Don't think God is scared to come down here. God in his holiness went and covered himself with darkness. Hid himself with curtains. That veil in the temple that kept man separated from the presence of God, that Bible says in Psalm 104 that God stretched out the heavens like a curtain. These heavens right here, not this one up here, this one is like a curtain. God has enclosed himself in darkness, veiled himself because of his holiness. Awaiting the day that creation is fit for him to reveal himself and to come out and rejoin that creation. Amen. He almost, it's almost like he abdicated and just went up, hid himself. Then creates man down here and says, subdue it. Your Bible begins with the creation of a heaven and an earth. These great waters, this sea, this firmament and all that. Your Bible ends with no more sea and new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. 
If you can't figure out what that, what any of that stuff is, man, it ain't my fault. Don't get mad at me. I think that stuff is clear. Amen. The question becomes, what happened? When Adam's created in Genesis chapter 1, where's he given dominion, guys? Over the earth. What is the earth? God's footstool. When he's told to subdue the earth, what do you think that means? He's to bring the earth in subjection to the authority of God. Amen. If God put everything in the earth under Adam, what's the only thing Adam is subject to? God. Amen. Dr. Rupp, you say it all the time, Adam's a king. Of course he is. He's the first king of this earth. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, this is about Jesus Christ. What happened? Adam, through disobedience, brought sin and death into this dominion right here. By man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Now in verse 24 it says, then cometh the end. Talking about, just talking about Christ now. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet. Right? Look down in verse 28. When all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. That ought to tell you what Adam was supposed to do, and it tells you what Christ is going to do. Christ is going to come back, sit at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. He's coming back to reign upon this earth and for a thousand years he's going to reign till he hath put down all power and authority and when all things are subdued he delivers that kingdom unto God the Father. Y'all got this? None of this has to do anything with your mystery yet. None of this has anything to do with you folks right now. Adam was given that dominion from the foundation of the world. You were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world. Adam's dominion was only revealed to be in the earth. How about these heavenly places up here? Because that's where the trouble started. See that king God made right there? You see that king? That king comes under attack in Genesis chapter 3, don't he? Who attacks him? Serpent. Where did he come from? Isn't that a strange book? Reading along there and just out of nowhere. And the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Well, where did that serpent come from? Who is he? Revelation 12 tells you who he is. That great red dragon, that old serpent. So in other words, that serpent of Genesis 3, by the time you get to Revelation 12, has grown into a seven-headed dragon. And he's called the devil, Satan. Where did he come from? What's his agenda? What's this whole nonsense of Genesis 3? Why does he come after this king? Why does he come after the dominion of the earth? That's how your Bible begins. Amen. We're talking about deliverance of a subdued kingdom unto God. You see... Something must have happened before Adam got here. Because Adam's put here to bring this under subjection to God. Before you get one chapter in, there's a serpent that comes and deceives his wife. Brings the dominion of the earth under sin and death. He's a murderer. That serpent plotted the death and destruction of that man that God created. Amen. That's the prince of the world you now live in. And then you get shocked and we get up here and we, you know, the Nazis walking around with the skull and bones. I told a guy one time, I said, this world is ran by a bunch of satanic people who, who love, it's a death cult. 
The majority of your presidents belong to Skull and Bones up there at Yale University. Same symbol that the Nazis wore and the SS wore on their hats. Satanic death cult. They believe in chaos, death, and murder. The Pharisees did too. You're of your father, the devil. He's a murderer from the beginning because he abode not in the truth. A murderer since when? From the beginning because he abode not in the truth. You ever ask yourself, what does Satan think he's going to get accomplished? You ever wondered? And pe pe people's like, is he that stupid? Does he really think he can take possession of heaven and earth away from the Most High God. You want to know what Satan's problem is? Same problem that exists in this earth today, he's an unbeliever. He doesn't believe a word God says. Amen. Ye shall not surely die. Liar. God is, so Satan comes, he attacks this dominion of the earth. Remember what Christ said. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in, as it is, there it is. So when that kingdom comes, what's it coming to do? It's coming to bring the will of God into this earth. And when that's fully established, God, Revelation 21 that tabernacle of God is going to come down and dwell with men in this earth. Amen. Amen.